All right, so repeat. Buckle up, because we are diving deep into generative energy, restoring the wholeness of life. Have you ever, like, stumbled onto an idea that totally reframed how you see, well, everything? It's definitely one of those books that stays with you dense, packed with research, which is why we're here to break it down. Exactly. So P kicks things off with this quote from William Blake. The bounded is loathed by its possessor. And honestly, that right there kind of sums up his whole thesis. We limit ourselves, you know, especially when it comes to aging. It's like we just accept this idea that getting older equals decline. But Pete's like, hold on a minute. Is that actually true? Right. And he goes deep on this, like really deep. He's not denying that bodies change over time, but he's challenging this whole inevitable decline narrative. He's pointing to all these other factors like environment, hormones, even how we think about aging can, according to Pete, play a huge role. He even suggests it could be reversible to some extent. There's that chapter, I think it's later on, where he talks about those experiments on cell lifespan. Oh, yeah, those are wild. Like Alexis Carroll keeping chicken cells alive for, like, way longer than a chicken's lifespan. And Hans Serra, too, with the rats in those glass tubes. The tissue inside aged rapidly, but, and this is crazy, when he drained the fluid regularly, it stayed young. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Yeah. So those experiments are pretty out there, but what Pete's getting at is that aging isn't just about time passing. It's about how our cells are producing and using energy, right? Exactly. And that ties into this concept of holism, which he talks about a lot. Right, holism. So instead of breaking things down into their tiniest parts, it's about understanding how all those parts work together as a whole. Exactly. You can't just look at a single cell in isolation. You have to see how it behaves within an organ, the whole body, even the environment. So like zoom out and look at the whole picture, not just the individual pixels. And this is where his critique of genetic determinism comes in, right? Like we aren't just slaves to our genes. 100%. He uses those examples of diabetes and nearsightedness, conditions we often think are purely genetic. But Pete shows how much they're influenced by lifestyle, diet, all these external factors. It's about recognizing we have more agency than we might think. This is honestly making me rethink my entire approach to health. And we're just scratching the surface here. Okay, so we're back, and I'm still thinking about that whole aging being reversible thing. But all right, before we go full immortality quest, let's talk about how we fuel these bodies, right? <laughs> we gotta eat. And you mentioned this earlier. Pete has some, shall we say, unconventional views on fat. Unconventional is putting it mildly. He basically turns the whole fat is bad thing on its head, like completely flips the script. He sees it as this essential energy source, especially saturated fat, something we've, according to him, totally misunderstood. Which is so different from like everything we've been taught, right? I mean, fat was the enemy growing up. Oh, totally. And Pete tackles that head on. He talks about all this research, for instance, on coconut oil. He suggests it might even have benefits for obesity, maybe even cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying to go chugging coconut oil by the gallon, but it does make you think twice, you know? Right. Not all fats are created equal. Right. And it's like he's saying some fats might actually be good for us. This is making me think about that chapter where he talks about how different types of fat affect hormone production. It's wild. It's like our bodies are these intricate systems, and what we put in them directly impacts how those systems function. Spot on. Pete is all about understanding those connections. He talks about how short and medium chain fatty acids, like those found in coconut oil, can be a really efficient energy source for our cells. He even compares them to rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. I love it. Okay, so we're talking about eating the right fats to support hormone production. What does that even look like practically? That's a whole other deep dive. But one key takeaway is his perspective on progesterone. Progesterone. Isn't that like a... A pregnancy thing? It's definitely crucial during pregnancy, but Pete argues it's super beneficial for both men and women, especially as we get older. He sees it as this powerful, protective hormone that can combat stress, maybe even aging itself. Okay, now that's interesting. It's like there's this whole other side to progesterone we never hear about. That's Pete for you, always uncovering these hidden connections. And this is where that holistic view comes in again, right? Yeah. we got to see the bigger picture of how our hormones work together, how they affect our health and longevity. Everything is all connected. And speaking of interconnected systems, there's that whole chapter about pregnant alone and the woman with cataracts. Wild, right? That one definitely makes you stop and think. Yeah. Now, we got to be careful about drawing big conclusions from one case study, of course. 
But Pete uses it to illustrate the potential benefits of pregnant alone, which, for those who don't know, is a precursor to other hormones like progesterone. It's like Pete saying, hey, our bodies are capable of amazing things if we just give them a little nudge in the right direction. Precisely. He suggests pregnant alone might act as this sort of cellular protector, shielding us from the damage that leads to aging. It's some seriously next level stuff. Okay, so we've got fat as rocket fuel, progesterone as a protector, pregnant alone as a, what was it, a cellular bodyguard? That's, this yeah. is a lot. But it's clear Pete sees hormones as key players in this whole aging and energy equation. Absolutely. He challenges us to move beyond these simplistic good hormone, bad hormone labels mm -hmm. and really understand how they interact within the body. It's fascinating. It's like he's encouraging us to become like biohackers. But instead of relying on gadgets and gizmos, it's about understanding these fundamental principles of how our bodies work. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm. And speaking of fundamental principles, this brings us to another one of Pete's curveballs, his perspective on light and darkness. Get ready to rethink what it means to see the light. Okay, so we're back. And I got to say, I'm looking at my lamps a little differently after that last part. Seriously, darkness can actually be stressful for our bodies. It does sound kind of strange at first, right? <laughs> but Pete lays out a pretty compelling argument. Like he has this whole chapter dedicated to what he calls the stress of darkness. Okay, so not just like feeling sleepy when it's dark, but actual physiological changes happening. Exactly. He talks about how darkness affects our cortisol levels, you know, mm -hmm. the stress hormone. And get this, he even links it to the efficiency of our mitochondria, those little energy powerhouses in our cells. So darkness is messing with our energy on a deep level. Wild. Right. And he highlights all this research suggesting that cortisol actually starts rising as soon as it gets dark, even if we're not asleep. Huh. Never thought about that. It gets even weirder. He found that darkness can mess with our blood sugar and even potentially lead to mitochondrial damage. And it peaks right before sunrise, which is kind of crazy. Whoa. So our bodies are struggling the most just when we should be waking up. That's like the opposite of what I would have guessed. It's counterintuitive, right? And this all ties back to Pete's main thing about maintaining optimal energy. He thinks that artificial light, particularly incandescent light, you know, with the reddish hues, might actually be beneficial during those darker months. So like having lamps on more in the winter could actually be good for us. That goes against pretty much everything we hear about blue light and sleep and all that. It does, doesn't it? But that's Pete for you, always challenging the conventional wisdom. And speaking of challenging what we think we know, we haven't even touched on his whole thing about the expanding Earth theory. Oh, right. That's a whole other rabbit hole, isn't it? We could do a whole deep dive on just that. Definitely. But for now, I think the main takeaway is how Pete uses the expanding Earth as this metaphor, you know, for challenging fixed beliefs. Okay, I'm listening. What's the connection there? He compares the Earth to like an, an opening bud, symbolizing constant growth, potential, always unfolding, always becoming. It's like he's saying, what if we've been looking at the Earth and even ourselves way too narrowly? What if there's just way more potential for growth than we ever imagined. That's a pretty powerful image. It's like he's encouraging us to stay open to new possibilities, keep asking questions, even about like the ground beneath our feet, right? Exactly. And that's what I find so inspiring about Pete's work. He's not afraid to ask the big questions and he wants us to do the same. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Ray Pete's generative energy, what would you say is the most important thing for our listeners to take away? Hmm, that's a good question. I think Keat would probably urge us to really embrace that holistic view, you know, of ourselves, the world around us, everything, to remember that it's all interconnected, our bodies, our environment, even our thoughts and actions. And to remember, we have more agency than we often think. It's about taking responsibility for our own health, energy, our lives, really, and to never stop questioning, never stop exploring, never stop learning. Beautifully said. I think Pete would definitely agree. And he'd probably add more more. Yeah. He was all about that potential for growth and expansion. That's something worth holding on to. It really is. So to all our listeners out there, if any of this piqued your interest, I definitely recommend checking out Pete's work for yourself. Generative energy is, I'll admit, a pretty dense read, but it's full of mind-blowing stuff. And who knows? It might just change how you see the world. It just <laughs> might. And that's the power of ideas, right? They have the power to change us. So true. Until next time, everyone, stay curious, stay energized, and remember, there's always more to discover.